Happy Black Friday, everybody. To those that are out there, best of luck, it's insane. Strangely enough, I'm not, despite the fact that I work in retail because, well, the corporate office of Zara has not processed my paperwork yet. The union has. Oh yes, I'm in a union again, yay. Second time in my life I've been in a union. The other one being the firefighters union. But, so, you know, hope everybody survived their holiday, all right? I'll probably do another video later. But right now, I want to go on a rant. I'm in a ranting mood. And this video, if you are a Democrat or an independent or left-leaning, please share this video with whoever you can. Try to get it attention, you know, to the political channels that have an audience for this kind of stuff. Because what I have to say is important. And, you know, aside from Jimmy Dore, those that have the audience to say it can't. And it is a staggering truth about the Democratic Party. It's a sad truth. And that truth is, is that when you really think about it, the Democratic Party only cares about white baby boomers. Now, why do I say that? Well, look at, and there's going to be a little bit of history lesson here, and I'll try to keep that part short. But in the early 90s, Bill Clinton and Al Fromm formed the Democratic Leadership Council, the DLC, as a reaction to the Reagan Revolution. And what that did was it moved, basically, Reagan moved the Republicans far right, and then the Democrats, or at least that wing, the DLC wing, the new Democrats, became the moderate Republicans. And they have controlled the party ever since Bill Clinton. And it is a boomer-controlled coalition as well. And these same boomers in recent years, and when I mean recent, like the last decade, you know, people like Pelosi, young people, get involved. But then if we dare try to like challenge their corrupt corporatist establishment and primary them, then that's bad too. So in essence, the only acceptable answer to them is, I shouldn't make fun. She could probably drink me under the table, no problem. But, you know. I have less years of drinking experience. Anyway, far less money. I can be bought, Nancy, to be quiet. Maybe, maybe, I guess I can. If Stern can be bought, anybody can be bought. But in essence, when I, oh, and by the way, when I mean young people, I mean, you know, anybody born after 1964. So that's you two Gen Xers, anybody Gen X and younger who basically have been screwed by the 40 years of boomer-run neoliberalism, you know, things like um, the, the, the outsourcing of most of our good union manufacturing jobs, you know, you know the ones that boomers, uh, uh, one person could support like a family of four, you know, with only a high school education, now they're retired comfortably with a pension, yeah, those kind of jobs. Or the fact that like in, in my case, I went to Penn State, the same school as my father, both as Pennsylvania residents. Funny enough, in 2009, we were going through his desk and we found one of his old semester bills from 1978. So we did two separate inflation calculators online and, you know, took his 1978 dollars and, you know, adjusted it for $2,009. Funny enough, despite the fact, again, we were both residents of that state, state school, not private school, his $78 to $2,009 was a third of what I was paying. Now, how's that fair? And who did that? Oh yeah, baby boomers did that too. Housing, cost of rent, all that, it was all about them. You know, I, I remember, and I'm barely older, but I remember a certain president saying, I don't want my daughter's generation to be the first generation to be worse off than their parents. So I will build a bridge to the 21st century and sign NAFTA, hey, interns. But anyway, so basically what Slick Willie said he was trying not to do is he did, and then Bush kicked it in high gear and, you know, then we had Obama come in who basically said, this is corrupt, I'm the new FDR. No, did I say FDR? I mean Bill Clinton, you know. And what Democrats have to understand is, well, one, baby boomers, that's not about you anymore, you know. Like the, the, the arrogance, the narcissism and the hubris of some of the boomers that I know, they're like, well, you know, they're talking about like policies that would make people my age, 10 years old or 10 years younger, lives better. But boomers, and this wouldn't affect them negatively or positively. You don't make, I'm not comfortable. So they're 
comfort, their need for nostalgia, their need to feel young because they refuse to accept that their heyday is over and that they're old. It's like, no, no, your life's going to suck because we can't offend the, the chosen ones, the, the white boomers' feelings. You know, it's even worse how the modern Democratic Party treats minorities because it's all lip service in the end. Do they really do anything anymore? Not really. I mean, at one time, yeah, when the World War II generation was in charge, yeah, Democrats did fight for things like civil rights, union rights, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, now, what do the corporatists do now? Well, they, they go really far left on social issues. Why? To try to say how liberal they are because when it comes to economic issues, there's very diff very little difference between them and the Republicans. And they're always trying to appease Republicans, and they never can, because no matter what they do, it's going to be called socialist. Obama was called a socialist, so was Bill Clinton. Obama was called a socialist for doing a right-wing health plan. That's right, the Obamacare uh, was, it's the individual mandate, which forces you to buy from the private market, i.e. you it is a corporatist program because the government is forcing you to buy something from a corporation, a for-profit corporation, and there is no you know non-profit public option currently. It is totally corporatist, which ironically is the same plan Mitt Romney did at the state level when he was governor of Massachusetts. And it is also when Hillary, you know, was kind of liberal as first lady and was pushing for universal health care with uh, Bernie in 1994, the Republican reacting to that in 96 was Dole had the individual mandate on his platform. So Obama did the Republican plan with a supermajority in Congress. That's right, a supermajority. Those are rare, and he squandered it. You know, that would be like Amelia Clark saying, will you be my date? And me going, like, I don't know, I, I got work in the morning. That'd be the ultimate. I'm sick! And I might not come back. But... Sorry, Zara. Um, <laughs> all right. So even with the supermajority, they do the Republican plan. And what do the Republicans do? They just move it further to the right. So you're never going to appease Republicans, Democrats. But what you can do is, you know, like actually get people other than baby boomers to come out and vote for you because all you do for the rest of us is shame us and tell us how great you are and that we owe you our vote and we don't because you blatantly tell us that you don't care about us. You blatantly tell us that we have to fall in line behind what the baby boomers want, why they're so fucking special. No one's ever explained to me that it's just it is what it is. And then you spew the same sickening fake platitudes that just infuriate us. That's an, here, here's, a, here's a tip for you, you know, James Carville and all the great minds of, of the boomer crap party. Nobody, nobody believes platitudes anymore. You can fact check people. We don't believe you. We know you're full of shit. We know you're just power hungry narcissists. Yeah, because we know what narcissism is now too, because many of us were raised by narcissistic boomers like me. <laughs> but, you know, you could at least give us some things. We, I, I, at least I understand, you're not gonna get everything, but you literally offer us nothing. Joe Biden in 2020 literally said, you know, I have no empathy for younger generation, and then continued to be the boomer in chief part Clinton, Bush, part five, part five. Yeah. And then you wonder why the Republican Party is actually picking up um, younger voters is because, you know, Trump is a right wing populist, but he is a populist. You know, the the era of the establishment centrist has passed. You know, the, the famous line that Carville did that, that made him this guru in the Democratic Party in 1992 was, it's the economy, stupid. Well, Carvel and, you know, all the other boomers, let me give you some advice. It's not 1992 anymore, stupid. That ain't ever coming back. It's gone. And by the way, we should have listened to Perot because, yeah, Perot, a centric self-made billionaire, didn't inherit his money. But, you know, he was looking back. Could you say Perot was wrong about NAFTA or voodoo economics? Don't take my word for it. His The 92 debates are interesting. They're on YouTube, as are Perot's infomercials. I suggest everybody listen to them because they're kind of prophetic. And also to really change the system, both parties are corrupt. And Perot actually was like a centrist populist, which is unheard of. If someone who's charismatic would like basically take Perot's platform, and obviously there's gotta be some adjustments for the time and stuff, they could actually unite the left and right populist parties, you know, which should be talking to each other to beat this corporate monstrosity. You know, two people, like a left 
and a right wing populace who have an audience and have sway should come together and you know try to unite that force. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Jimmy Dore and Tucker Carlson, because you both have the audiences to do it. Yeah. I'll help. But you gotta put me on the show, which could be risky. <laughs> but that's what it comes down to. It's shut up and accept the status quo. And no. No, that's why people, a lot of people that are traditionally left-wing voted for Trump because it's like, you know what? Anything but the status quo, you know, even people I know that, that said, oh, things might get worse under Trump, but it'll, it'll force the Democrats to actually change. Like they will not be able to cram down uh, that same 90s centrist corporatism that made our lives hell and was basically one big lie. You know, any degree's a good degree. The 21st century will be brighter. You know, NAFTA will create jobs. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yeah, all of it lies. So it's basically, in a nutshell, what it comes down to. And and you know, there is this need for for compromise. See, see, I can think of some real compromise. For one, like, okay, can't do free college, but answer me this: Why, like, say a, a student? in Penn State now, why is he paying three times or even more? I don't know, I've been out over a decade. Like why isn't the cost of a, to go to a state university as a state student the same, obviously adjusted for inflation as it was in the 70s when it was the boomers, because we're not boomers and we're second class citizens, you know. I've never seen, you know, in the 90s, it wasn't the World War II generation trying to hold on to the spotlight saying they weren't old and it's still their time and it's all about them. Boomer leadership got to go. You know, Howard Dean said that like 10 years ago and you haven't really heard from him since. It's time for the baby boomers to get out of politics. <laughs> you know, they got to die to get him out of office. You know, look at the demented walking death rattle of a president. And it's on both sides. Look at, look at Turtle Boy. You know, they, they, they know. Because they know. They know that this neoliberal corporatism has been nothing but a scam. And there's, as they continue to stuff more money in their pockets, they've all gotten rich as civil servants, which again was unheard of really prior to Reagan when he basically made bribery legal and then Citizens United, which says money equals speech. Money equals speech, I should try that, you know. For those of you that aren't, you know, the special anointed people, by that I mean white baby boomers, um, go to a job interview, get a thousand bucks, put it on the table and say, this is my speech telling you I'm the best candidate. See how that goes. Yeah. See how that goes. <laughs> Should be funny and be like, well, then try, then if they deny it and say you're trying to bribe them, take them to court because the Supreme Court said money equals speech, right? Right? They also said corporations are people, which is also insane. But it's this bribery, good old boys club, cronyism, nepotism. They know how corrupt it is, the Democrats and the Republicans. The Dem whatever you feel about the Republicans, they at least stand for something. A lot of it is abhorrent, but they, they at least have an ideology, you know. The Democrats, it's just platitudes. Their, their whole message is, is, we are not the Republican Party, but we are not progressive. We are centrist corporatists, which is what you want. And if you don't, you must fall in line. Basically, that's been their message since I've been old enough to vote, and that was 2006. Yeah, yeah, 2006. So you're going to keep losing. We are not going to fall in line. Either you give us a reason to support you, you accept the fact that the era of third way neoliberal corporatism is over and that we will never bring it back. And, you know, those that have benefited from it, your generation, you know, the white boomer class, they're dying off. Your numbers get smaller every year, and every year more younger people get old enough to vote. So it's only going to get worse for you. you. You know, like there will come a day where the baby boomers are gone. I mean, there hasn't been a baby boomer born since 1964, so eventually they will all be gone. That is essentially this rant. I wanted to say something else too, and now I can't remember what it was. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you know, the, the supposed liberals, you know, trying to cram things like TPP down our throat. You know, more outsourcing. It's like, no, 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 crush the unions. No, 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 no. It's like, you don't deserve a living wage. 
but you know, you went to school like the boomers told you to, got in debt. You don't even deserve a living wage, but every boomer who went to high school should have this golden parachute pension from a job you could never have because they outsourced it when you were in elementary school. But the boomers tell you, well, you, I mean, you, you, you couldn't have done it. That's why we had to get rid of it. It's like, but the steel mill closed when I was 10. What do you mean people my age wouldn't take those jobs? It was, it, it was gone completely when I was 10. Well, 10 year olds used to work in steel mills, not in boomer days. We were the greatest, you know. We put a man on the moon. How? In 1969, the oldest boomer born in 1946 was 23 years old. So how did the boomers do that? Well, we watched it on TV. Exactly. You all watch too much TV. And believe whatever TV says, mainstream. If it's mainstream, it must be true. That That's basically the ideology that they're stuck in that they can't get out of is the establishment is good by virtue of being the establishment. No, it's the establishment by virtue of corruption, cronyism, nepotism, things like that nature. Yeah. So in essence, that's my rant to the Democratic Party. Oh, and, and nobody cares what celebrities think anymore. None of them. No, no, no. You know, out of touch rich people don't get to tell us how to vote. And uh, yeah. Telling you that you raised the most money tells us you're the most corrupt. You know, money equals corruption because it can be done in small dollar donations. That that you know that old Jewish guy from from the Northeast that you kept cheating out of the nomination who could have beat Trump and actually made the country a better place. Yeah, he did it without taking corporate PAC money. And you know, some people, a few in Congress, do it too. You don't get to tell us what to do anymore, boomers. Like, if defiance is all we have left after you've ruined our lives, we're gonna defy. We're gonna defy, we're gonna defy, and we're gonna eventually expose y your decades of leadership for what it was, because your legacy's shit. Your legacy is narcissism. Well, I think I'm done now. Join my Patreon.